Hello and welcome to the unit on database management. This unit consists of 20 marks and this is the part 18 of this particular unit. So let's get started with today's topic which is aliasing in SQL. So this is the syllabus and out of the syllabus we are going to discuss the highlighted topic that is aliasing. So let's get started with the basic concept of aliasing. So what do we mean by aliasing? Aliasing refers to assigning temporary names to database tables or columns. So if I want to put an alternative name into a database table or database column, then this concept is referred to as aliasing. When it is useful, it is useful in making the queries more readable and also in avoiding naming conflicts. So if I want to make the queries more readable, and to avoid the naming conflicts, which we shall see when we join more than one tables, then aliasing concept is very useful. Aliasing is particularly useful in case of joins and in order to make queries simpler. Particularly aliasing will be useful in case of joins. We already learned about three types of joins, equijoin, natural join and Cartesian product. But there we did not use aliasing. Now we will see in this part how aliasing will be very very useful in case of uh, joins. Otherwise the queries become more and more complex. Using the concept of aliasing it can be made simpler. Now how is aliasing done in SQL? In SQL, it is done using the as keyword. So remember this thing, as keyword is used in SQL in order to perform the operation of aliasing. Now aliasing is of two types, are of two types. First is column alias and second is table alias. We will see both of this one after another along with suitable examples. So let's get started with the concept of column alias. Now what is column alias? The columns in a query can be given a different name as per our choice. So by default, the columns in a query will have some names. But if I want, I can change the default names and I can put my own alternative name. This concept is known as column alias. So putting a new name to an existing column name is called column alias. If I have to simply put it like that. Now it has a syntax. The syntax goes as follows. Select column name as column alias. So whatever you will write in column alias, it will become the alternative name for this particular column name. So similarly, you can wherever in whichever column you want an alternative name, after the column name, you put the keyword as and after that you put the new name which you want for that particular column. Now we can do it in another way, which is Instead of putting the as keyword, if I directly put only a space, then also SQL will understand that we want to give a new name to the existing name. Here, wherever I am getting column name, column name. Now, column name is the original name of the SQL column. But the new name is the column alias name. So we have learned two ways in which column alias can be done. First is using the as keyword, second is using the space. Now let's try to understand this syntax with the help of some examples. So let's take one example. So here we will take a table or a relation as you may call it EMP. So this is the EMP relation. Here what I want to do, I want to rename ename as you can see this is the original name into a new name which is name. So instead of ename, I just want to display it as name. So how to do that? For doing that, we will take the help of column alias syntax. So let's do that. So for doing that, the query would be somewhat like this. Select EMP ID comma ename as name. I want to rename this particular column. So after this particular column, what I have done, I have used the keyword as followed by the new name which I want in place of ename, comma e salary, comma state from EMP. I have not done anything to EMP ID, e salary and state. Therefore, it will be displayed as it is. But if I want to give a new name to these columns also, then also it can be done. So as I press the enter key, I'll get this as the output in SQL. 
there is the second method also of doing this which is using the space so instead of as keyword if i directly put a space here like select emp id comma e name space name comma e salary comma state from emp then also what will happen i'll be getting the same result as the output so let's see it practically so this is our emp table let's say i want to rename e name to name so how i'll do that i'll do that as follows let's say select emp underscore id underscore e name as name sorry sorry i did some mistake here i'll have to yeah so sorry about that select emp underscore id comma e name as name comma e salary comma state i don't want to rename the other columns i just want to rename e name as name therefore other columns are left untouched from what is the name of the relation from which we want to rename it is the emp relation so as i put a semicolon and press the enter key you will find that e name has transformed to name all right i can do the same thing using the as keyword also so let's say emp underscore id comma not as keyword by putting space space name comma e salary comma state from emp if i do that then also i'll be getting the same output now it's not mandatory that you will have to put each and every column while using aliasing let's say i want to put only emp id and i want to rename e name to name that can also be done let's say select emp underscore id comma e name space name from emp then only these two columns will be re, uh, shown along with the renaming of e name to name all right so in this way what we do we perform the operation of column alias so let's go to the next example now if i want a column name to have more than one word then what should be done in that case i will put the entire word within quotes so the column alias name having more than one word should be enclosed in quotation marks so in that case what i'll do i'll be putting the entire renamed name okay renamed name within quotation marks i can put either single quotes or even double quotes so let's try to understand with the help of an example let's say i want to rename e name as employee names employee name so here what we can see we can see that employee name has two words so if i use the old technique of renaming then i'll get an error let's see if i write select emp underscore id comma e name as employee name comma e salary comma state from emp here as you can see i have not put any quotation mark within employee name so as you can see there is no quotation marks within employee name but why quotation mark is required because the renamed name consists of two words so if i do it in the earlier manner and press the enter key what i'll have i'll get an error here as you can see here you have an error in your sql syntax and certain other related things so in order to correct the error what i need to do i need to simply put it within quotes if there are more than one word so the correct form of query would be this one select emp id comma e name as employee name employee name enclosed with uh, within quotes comma e salary comma state from emp so in that case i'll get the correct answer and you can see that e name has been renamed to employee name so this is how we do column allies so let's try to understand it with the help of an example so this is our original table i want to rename e name to employee name so if i do it like this emp underscore id comma e name as employee name comma e salary comma state 
from EMP, I'll get an error here. Why the error is shown? Because I have not put employee name within quotes. So the correct form would be to write the same query but put it within quotes. Both single and double quotes are accepted. All right. So remember this trick if you are using more than one word as a renamed name. So let's move ahead and see the next topic which is the table alias. Now if I want I can rename a table name also. That concept is known as table alias. So a table alias is a temporary label given along with table name in from clause. So if I want to give a temporary label, label means if I want to give a temporary name along with the table name where it should be given, it should be given in the from clause. Then it is known as table alias. Why it is used? It is used in order to improve the readability of our queries. So if I want to make my queries more readable, then table alias will be fruitful. It can be used in the select and where clauses. Now where can we use table alias? I can use it in the select clause and within the where condition. Let's go and see the uh, syntax of table alias. There are two syntaxes. Here select column 1, comma column 2, dot, 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 from table name as alias name where condition. Here after the table name, I'll put the as keyword and then I'll put the alias name. We have an alternative syntax also, just like we had in uh, column alias. Here the same syntax, just instead of as keyword, as keyword is not mandatory. But if I do not want to use the as keyword, I'll just have to put a space here and the alias name. The table name is the original name. Alias name is the new name which I want to uh, show in the output. Let's try to understand this concept with the help of an example. All right. So let's consider two relations. One is EMP1 with the following values and the other as e -misc, uh, yeah, e underscore misc with the following values. Now, if I want to show the employee ID, employee name and the employee designation, now what you find, you find that employee ID and employee name are in the first relation and employee designation or e -desig is in the second relation. That means it is a case of join. So if I do not use uh, any alias, then how it will be? Then I can simply write it like this. Select emp1 dot eid emp1 dot eid means see eid can be a conflicting one because eid is present in emp1 also and in emisc also i need to specify from which table am i i am bringing this e underscore id i am bringing it from emp1 therefore i have written here as emp1 dot eid comma e name comma e desig why have I not specified from which table I am bringing these columns? Because there is no chance of confusion. Why there is no chance of confusion? Because there is no repetitive column in both the tables except EID. From EMP1, comma, EMISC, why I need to specify both the tables? Because I require data from both the relations. Where EMP1.EID equals to EMISC.EID. So why have I given this particular condition because I want to display only those rows where e employee ID of the first table is equal to the employee ID of the second table. This has been discussed in details in the joints. If you have not understood it properly, you can go and look up that particular video. So as I press the enter key, I'll get this as the output. Now let us do the same thing using the concept of table alias. So now what I would like to do here in this case, no aliasing is used. But if I want to use the concept of aliasing, then what will be done? So let's say I want to rename the relation one or the table one that is EMP1 to E and I want to rename the relation two that is E underscore misc as EM. So in order to rename it and write the same query, let's see how it is done. So for that, I'll be writing something like this. Select e.eid, 
e dot eid means i want to rename emp1 as e so wherever you would have written emp1 in those places you will write what you will write e here all right then comma e name comma e desic from emp1 space e that means in this particular part i have renamed emp1 as e i want to rename emisc as em so in this part i have done this particular thing that is e name emisc space em where e dot eid equals to em dot eid so it is similar to the previous query just what i have done in place of emp1 i have written e and in place of em emisc i have written em now where is the renaming done renaming is done in the from part as you can see here now this can be done using the as keyword also as follows so if i write select e dot eid comma e name comma e desic from emp1 as e comma e misc as em where e dot eid equals to em dot eid you can either choose to use the as keyword for renaming or simply put a space where you want it to be renamed and then as i press the enter key what i'll get i'll get the same output as i got from the previous query now let's try to understand it with the help of an uh, of uh, practically so select star from the name of the table is emp1 this is the original table and select star from e underscore misc this is the second table now i want to join both the tables because i require employee id and employee name from the first relation and employee designation from the second relation so for that if i use the concept of aliasing how i'll do that select e dot eid remember i want to rename emp1 as e comma e name comma e desic whatever column i want those columns i have put after the select word from emp1 i want to rename emp1 as e so i can write here emp1 as e comma e underscore misc i want to rename it as what i want to rename it as em so i simply put em here where e dot eid now when i'm joining it should be with respect to two columns from both the tables i'm renaming with respect i'm just joining it with respect to employee id therefore i have to write here where e dot eid equals to em dot e i d and this is the output here i am getting values from both the relations and with the concept of renaming now if i do not want to use the as keyword it's perfectly fine the query will be same just i have to erase as but make sure you put a gap between the original relation and the renamed relation here also i'll just simply re remove the as keyword and as i press the enter key i'm getting the same output so this is how we do the table alias so in this part we have seen how to do the table alias and how to do the column alias so with this all the topics of the syllabus is being completed if something new is added up then i'll make sure that i'll cover those topics also i hope that this session was useful thank you very much